Welcome to our stock market briefing. Today, we dive into some pressing issues impacting education in Glasgow, where parents are sounding the alarm over teacher cuts that threaten the support for children with additional needs. Leon King, a concerned parent, emphasizes that these cuts could break either the children or the teachers, or both, highlighting the urgent call for action against further reductions in teaching staff. Switching gears to the NFL, we have exciting news as owners have just approved a groundbreaking rule allowing private equity investors to buy up to 10% stakes in their franchises. This marks a significant shift in the league's investment landscape, opening doors for new financial opportunities and reflecting the soaring value of NFL teams. Lastly, we take a look at Wall Street's mixed results, with the Australian share market expected to slide as uncertainty looms. While some stocks, like Nvidia, are on the rise, others, such as Paramount's parent company, are struggling. The bond market remains stable, but all eyes are on upcoming retail reports that could shape consumer spending trends. Please stay tuned for more detailed insights. BBC reports on the alarming impact of education cuts in Glasgow, where parents like Lee and King are witnessing firsthand the consequences of reduced teacher numbers on their children, particularly those with additional support needs. With her three sons facing challenges in the classroom, Leanne highlights a stark reality, the absence of one teacher can lead to critical support services being neglected. The Glasgow City Council has already slashed 172 teaching positions, with plans to further reduce staff, raising concerns that vulnerable children will be disproportionately affected. Despite the council's claims of minimal impact, the reality suggests otherwise, as parents fear for the future of their children's education and overall well-being. In a significant shift, the Associated Press reveals that NFL owners have voted to allow private equity firms to acquire stakes of up to 10% in their teams. This marks a departure from previous prohibitions and aligns the NFL with other major American sports leagues that permit higher ownership percentages. The decision stems from a long-term study initiated five years ago, reflecting the increasing value of franchises like the Denver Broncos and Washington Commanders. This new rule opens the door for current owners to access liquidity while providing potential investors with opportunities in a lucrative market that continues to grow. The Sydney Morning Herald discusses the mixed performance of Wall Street, with stock indexes fluctuating following a record-setting day for the Dow Jones. Despite the uncertainty, the S&P 500 showed slight gains, buoyed by optimism surrounding consumer confidence and spending, which play a crucial role in the U.S. economy. As investors await key economic reports, including inflation data, the anticipation of potential interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve adds to the market's volatility. The report emphasizes the resilience of consumer spending amidst inflationary pressures, highlighting the critical interplay between economic indicators and investor sentiment as markets navigate a complex financial landscape. The Sydney Morning Herald explores the dilemma faced by mortgage holders, whether to maximize their offset accounts or invest in shares. The offset account, a transactional account linked to a home loan, reduces the interest charged, providing guaranteed returns, unlike the volatile stock market. For instance, with $50,000 in an offset account on a $200,000 loan, interest is only charged on $150,000, potentially saving $2,220 annually at a 6% interest rate. However, investing could yield higher returns, albeit with risks and tax implications. Ultimately, individuals must weigh their financial goals, risk appetite, and the current economic climate to make informed decisions. In another article from the Sydney Morning Herald, the potential economic fallout of a re-elected, tariff man, Trump is discussed, particularly concerning Australia. Trump's proposed tariffs, including a 10% levy on all imports and a staggering 60% on Chinese goods, could severely disrupt the global trading system. Economists warned that such trade wars would lead to increased costs for households and businesses, exacerbating inflation and pushing up interest rates. With Australia heavily reliant on exports, particularly to China, the ramifications could be devastating, affecting everything from job security to mortgage rates. Yahoo US features an exclusive interview with Chris Waddle, discussing the challenges facing League One, particularly its lack of a strong TV deal in the UK. Waddle highlights the dominance of leagues like the Premier League, Serie A, and the Bundesliga, leaving League One struggling for viewership and investment. With clubs like Marseille and PSG standing out, the league's overall financial constraints hinder its competitiveness. Waddle emphasizes that to regain its status among Europe's elite, French football needs significant investment to attract and retain top talent, as many promising players are quickly sold to wealthier clubs abroad.
Economist, Donald Trump has long held a contentious view of the Federal Reserve, often criticizing its chair, Jerome Powell, for keeping interest rates higher than his administration desired. During his presidency, Trump went so far as to label Powell a bigger enemy than Xi Jinping, reflecting his frustration with monetary policy that did not align with his economic agenda. As he campaigns for a return to the presidency, Trump has expressed a desire to have direct influence over the Fed's decisions, indicating that if elected, he plans to confront the central bank once again regarding interest rates and monetary policy. BBC, investment in the rail line connecting London to Shrewsbury is being hailed as a transformative opportunity for the West Midlands. Local businesses and civic leaders have rallied behind the proposal, which includes enhancements such as an hourly service, signaling upgrades, and electrification of the tracks. Telford MP Sean Davies and Shropshire Council leader Leslie Picton emphasize that these improvements are crucial for economic growth, tourism, and trade in the region. With recent enhancements already in place, further investment is deemed essential to unlock the full economic potential of this vital transport link, fostering a more integrated and prosperous regional economy. Reuters breaking views, although the frenzy surrounding SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, has cooled since its peak in 2021, activity in the sector continues to provide Wall Street with steady fees. With approximately $3 trillion in aging assets seeking exits, private equity firms are looking to SPACs as a viable route for mergers and acquisitions. As traditional IPOs fall short of expectations, the push for structural changes within the SPAC framework may attract a broader range of investors and sponsors. By lobbying for these modifications, private equity firms could potentially enhance their returns, turning SPACs into more effective tools for their investment strategies. Associated Press reports a notable increase in American consumer confidence for August, with the Conference Board's Consumer Confidence Index rising to 103.3 from July's 101.9. This uptick reflects a more optimistic outlook among consumers regarding their income, business prospects, and the job market, as evidenced by the index's short-term expectations climbing to 82.5. However, despite these positive shifts, concerns linger, particularly related to the labor market, which has shown signs of weakness after a disappointing July jobs report. Although inflation has eased from its previous highs, rising costs for essentials continue to weigh on consumer sentiment suggesting a complex economic landscape where optimism coexists with caution. CNN highlights improvements in housing affordability across the U.S., driven by anticipated interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. However, the situation remains dire in certain metropolitan areas, particularly New York, where renters allocate a staggering 58% of their income toward rent. The report underscores the stark contrast between regions experiencing rising housing costs, like New York and Miami and those where affordability is improving, such as Tampa and Denver. The influx of new residents has fueled demand in cities like Miami, but the lack of affordable housing options remains a pressing issue. As home price growth slows nationally, the report emphasizes the need for continued construction to alleviate pressure on housing markets. South China Morning Post discusses the dramatic 28.5% plunge in PDD holding stock price, which erased $55 billion from its valuation, reflecting shaken investor confidence after management downplayed profit prospects. Following a disappointing earnings report, executives announced a shift towards prioritizing long-term growth over short-term profits, a strategy that has left investors feeling uncertain. Despite reporting significant revenue growth, PDD faces fierce competition from rivals like Alibaba and JD.com, who are gaining ground in the e-commerce sector. Analysts express concerns over PDD's ability to navigate a challenging economic environment, as the company aims to enhance product quality while maintaining its low-cost advantage, a move that could further complicate its market position. South China Morning Post reports that the Chinese government has introduced a comprehensive set of guidelines aimed at bolstering green finance within the Yangtze River Economic Belt, a crucial area that constitutes 21% of the nation's land but generates 44% of its GDP. This initiative, announced by the central bank and several ministries, encourages eligible companies to raise funds through green bonds and equity to finance projects focused on waste treatment, green technology, and pollution control. This directive aligns with the recent commitments made during a key Communist Party economic conference to enhance climate resilience and sustainable growth. The Yangtze River Economic Belt is designated as the main battlefield for green development, with plans for companies to engage in various financial activities including listings and mergers. 
Financial institutions are urged to issue green bonds that meet both domestic and international standards, thereby attracting foreign investment for China's low-carbon transition. Additionally, the guidelines propose the establishment of carbon accounts for certain industries to improve carbon footprint management. This initiative follows a broader plan unveiled by the State Council to make China's economy more environmentally friendly, with a goal of creating a 15 trillion yuan, $2.1 trillion, environmental protection industry by 2030. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Ancient law, ancient belts, I pay it more.